has a name. Oh, no room for my shoes. Oh, you take them away. Freedom's coming, and it has a name. It is Jesus. How sweet is the name. Hey, if you're alive today, give a shout of praise. Yay! Woo! Come on. Amen. Amen. You can take your seats. Amazing. So good to be with you. We're declaring this is the house of miracles. Not only this house, not only this place, but your house, your life. God is moving. He's still speaking because he is alive today. And I'm so glad to be here, here on this hot summer day. How many of you like the heat? (laughs) Not many of you. Come on, you're blessed, I'm telling you. My family lives in Bogota, Colombia, and it rains all the time. And I'm just saying, this is the blessing right here. We have a treat for you. We have such a treat in store for you. I'm so, so happy to have my family here in town. Pastors Jorge and Margarita Catano, they are going to speak to us. Before I invite them up, my name is... Luke, along with my wife, Marcella, we are the pastors here at MCI Church in L.A. And again, this is our dream, is to reach as many people as possible for Jesus. Our purpose is that we want to love God and love people, that we could win souls. And not only that, can I tell you something that's amazing, that we could make disciples. Have you read your Bible lately? Jesus came to do what he made, disciples, so that you wouldn't do life alone. And that's why we're here together, not just for a Sunday service, but that we be able to do life together, grow together in our relationship with Jesus and also our relationship with others. Um, And so if you are visiting us for the first time, hopefully you got one of these cards. It's our Connect card when you were walking in. If you didn't get one of these, We'd love for you to fill it out because we want to get to know you. We want to help you take next steps because, again, we believe that church is bigger than Sunday. It's doing life together in family. So if you need one of those, would you just wave your hand and one of our hosts would be glad to get that to you. Our hosts would have that to you. And uh, I want to just remind you that we have next Sunday something really cool called heart and soul. Anybody been a part of heart and soul? They're going to just play a quick video as, uh, as I talk about heart and soul. All right, well, this is Heart and Soul. We do this once a month on the first Sunday of every month. And my apologies, I said it's next week, but it's not. We're in a five-week month. So it's not next Sunday, but the following. And we, along with my wife and some of our leaders, we just want to spend time with you. Eat some breakfast. We provide breakfast for you. And we talk about how you can take next steps. We have amazing things. And also, it's a place where you can ask questions and get to know us. So make sure there's a Next Steps banner at the your left, my right, at the back, and there's an iPad. You can sign up so that we can be ready for you. We'd love to have you. And finally, we're in something called Grow, this Grow campaign, and we are giving to grow because we want to grow this house because it's not just for us. It's for everybody else that's not here yet. We are building a house that we believe is going to touch thousands and thousands of lives. And, uh, and so as you get you ready to even give today, would you think about the Grow campaign? Um, and so, but without further ado, I would like to invite up and honor our guests today, Pastor Jorge and Pastor Margarita. If you welcome them. I do have to just say 
say a few things. This is my beautiful sister-in-law. And uh, she's, she's obviously my wife's sister. And he's pretty good looking too. Um, but you know what? It's, they have changed my life. This couple, as I met them in 2007, um, they opened their home to me. And they allowed me to just recover. <laughs> um, I grew up in church. And so, you know, I needed to come under a couple and be with them. And they loved me. They discipled me. And they spoke into my life. And, of course, they allowed me to marry the sister <laughs> because it, it, she had to say yes. And so, again, it's such a privilege to have you guys. Um, I love you. Thank you for the, the ministry that they have in Bogota is touching nations, not only in Bogota, Colombia, um, but also in Russia. And they've been all over the world. Pastor Jorge is about to go to Korea. Um, and so, just so amazing. So, one more time, can we just thank God for their lives? Bueno, que, que privilegio poder estar. Yo tengo mi traductor personal. Well, it's a privilege to be here. I have my personal interpreter. <laughs> bueno, qué bendición and poder it's a estar en MCI Los Ángeles. Real blessing to be here in MCI Los Ángeles. Muchos saludos de parte de MCI Bogotá. I bring Bogotá. warm greetings to you from MCI Fuerte Bogotá. Fuerte aplauso al Señor. Yes, let's praise the Lord for that. Eh, el ministerio principal de MCI se encuentra en Colombia. And so the mother church of MCI is in Bogotá. Y es increíble ver cómo al pasar de los años. And it's amazing to see as the years have passed. Se ha ido extendiendo a diferentes naciones. The church has been expanding to different nations. La semana antepasada estuvimos en Chile. Last week we were in Chile. En la MCI Chile. We were ministering in MCI una iglesia Chile. que ha crecido It's mucho. A church that has grown so much. Y cuando uno está en una MCI, and when you visit an MCI church, uno siente algo especial. You could feel something special. Siente que está en casa. You could feel that you're at home. Siente también esa cobertura de nuestros pastores César y Emma Claudia Castellanos. Pastor César y Emma Claudia Castellanos. Y uno siente algo especial. And you could sense something special. ¿Por qué no le damos special? un fuerte aplauso al so Señor? So come on, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise for that. Por MCI for MCI por esta iglesia, for this beautiful church sus for you, han sido your pastors fieles al llamado, they have been faithful to their calling quiero contarles que Janet Marcela, and you know I want to share with you Marcela muchos años, uh, many years ago antes de casarse, before she got married cuando estaba soltera, when she was single hizo parte de mi equipo de she dos. was part of my team of 12 quiero decirles que era la mejor de and mis you know dos. she was the best of my 12 Llamaba a los discípulos, she would constantly call her disciples she would call them the day before the services she would visit them de she was always looking after y them ella a Luke, and when she met Luke y ya se casaron, and then eventually got ya married tenía que su vida, when you know she was starting her life que me dolió que haya know, salido de mi it equipo, was so painful when she had to leave era la mejor. because she was the best <laughs> la mejor so you have the best pastor y sé que ella los llama muchos. And I know that she calls you all. El otro día la veía haciendo llamadas. The other day I saw her, she was making phone calls. Y me acordaba de eso. And I remembered that. De cómo ella siempre llamaba a las I personas. I remember how she called people Estaba all the pendiente. time. She was always looking after people. Y sé que el ministerio people. que el Señor les ha dado. And I see the great ministry God has given es them. Es porque han sido fieles. It's a result of their faithfulness. Y sé que una nueva etapa viene para esta iglesia. And I know that a new stage is beginning for this church. ¿Y saben cuál es? And you know what that is? La etapa del aumento. It's the stage of increase. El Señor los va a aumentar en todo. God is going to give you an increase los in all things. Los va a aumentar en crecimiento. It's going to cause you to increase in growth, en finanzas, in finances, en familia, in family. En tu trabajo. He's going to bring in increase in your job. No nos va a de peso. You're not going to increase es any aumento, weight. Si no, señor. There's no increase of Queremos weight. El aumento en las otras We want all other kinds of increase. Pero el señor va a traer a tu vida. But I believe God will bring increase into en your life. Áreas donde tú que in, eras the, poco, in the areas where you thought you were little. Donde no veías respuesta, where you were not seeing results. Ni el resultado, where you were not seeing success. Va a venir un God is going to bring an increase. Van a en tu You're going to get promoted in 
in your job. Vas a tener más discípulos. You're going to have more disciples. Tu célula va a crecer. Your cell is going to grow bigger. Y Dios te va a visitar con el aumento. And God is going to visit you with increase. En lo que resta de este año. In the next, in the course of this year. Y a mí me impacta la vida de Noé. And you know there's a character called Noah in the Porque Bible. Porque la Biblia describe a Noé. And it impresses me because the Bible describes Noah. Como un hombre justo. As a righteous man. Dice Génesis capítulo 6 The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 6 8 y 9, and in verses 8 and 9 Pero Noé contaba con el favor del it Señor It says but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord Esta era la historia de Noé This is the genealogy of Noah Noé era un hombre justo Noah was a just man Honrado entre su gente Perfect in his generation Siempre anduvo fielmente Noah con Dios Noah walked with God Dice la Biblia que es mejor la buena fama que el buen ungüento. He had a better reputation than good oil. Y en eso se resumió la vida de Noé. And that basically summarizes the life Tenía of Noah. el favor de Dios. He was a man who had God's favor. Era justo. He was a just man. Era honrado. He was a man of honor. Era fiel. He was a faithful man. Por eso la Biblia habla de Noé. And that's why the Bible speaks of que Noah. Que tuvo las recompensas de Dios sobre su vida. And the Bible shows us that he received great rewards Porque from God. Porque era una persona justa. Why? Because he was just. Tú vas a declarar sobre tu vida Now, I want you to speak over que el your life, favor de Dios va a estar sobre ti God's grace is going to be upon como estuvo sobre la vida de Noé. As it was on Noah. Pero para eso But for that to happen, necesitas ser honrado. You need to be a man or a woman of honor. Necesitas ser fiel. You need to be faithful. Necesitas ser justo. You need to be righteous. Y eso hará que las recompensas And as a result of that, del justo God's rewards vengan sobre tu will vida. Come upon your life. A veces decimos, Señor, yo quiero recompensa. You know, sometimes we say, Lord, I want your rewards. Yo quiero tu bendición I sobre mí. Your blessing on my life. Pero a veces no queremos cumplir But sometimes, con los requisitos que Dios nos pide we don't want to do what God expects on our behalf para recibir esa so that we could receive his reward y vemos que la Biblia dice que Noé era justo and so the Bible tells us that he was a just man ¿qué significaba ser justo? what did it mean that he was a just que man? que vivía según la ley de Dios it meant that he lived in accordance to the law of God en los tiempos de Noé back in the days of Noah alrededor de él había una cultura mala all around him he was surrounded by an evil culture pecaminosa there was so much sin con costumbres incorrectas there were terrible customs pero Noé decidió ser justo but yet Noah decided to be a just Noé man Noé decidió ser diferente he determined to be a los different, de su cultura different to the people in his culture Tú vas a decidir ser diferente. so you are going to decide to be Tú different no vas a hablar como los del mundo. you're not going to speak like the world Tú no speaks vas a hablar como tus compañeros. you're not going to talk like your Tú talk, vas a friends talk la diferencia. you're going to make a difference y eso ya te da. and that una característica we'll give you a characteristic, del que puede recibir a la recompensa Noé era honrado ¿qué es ser honrado? So es ser recto íntegro es una persona recta en su actuar you are upright in the way that you es live. una persona que en las pequeñas cosas siempre hace lo correcto Noé no le debía nada a nadie Noah owed no one any Noé no se andaba metiendo en todos los negocios Noah, que se ponían frente a él era un hombre honrado era un hombre correcto en todos sus caminos en su área financiera siempre era honrado y Noé también Noah era fiel ¿y qué significa ser fiel? So what does it mean to be faithful? es aquel que cumple sus compromisos is one who is to his es constante y persevera en lo que se le ha encomendado and in that which has been dice la Biblia que las manos del diligente siempre tienen abundancia la pregunta es ¿eres fiel con lo que se te ha encomendado? ¿eres una persona recomendable? 
a person that others could confiable are you trustworthy eres una persona que si le delegan algo en su trabajo lo hace bien the kind of person that if something is delegated to you you do it right que si hace algo en la iglesia lo hace if bien something is entrusted to you in church you no do it right era fiel y saben que se vio la fidelidad de Noé you know en sus ofrendas él siempre le cumplió a Dios él en entendió to que todo lo que poseía no le pertenecía a él le pertenecía him. primero a Dios algo que me impacta de Noé fue Noah. aquello que hizo was what he did. lo primero que hizo the very first thing he did, cuando salió del arca when he came out of the ark. recuerdan aquel diluvio I, I don't know if you remember the storm. donde estuvieron tantos días en medio del mar esperando que el diluvio terminara and they were waiting for the storm to cease. vivieron con animales they were living with animals in the boat. estaban todos deseando salir de aquel de aquel arca sure everyone was anxious to get ya se estaban desesperando I'm sure they were growing desperate. Noé había perdido su casa Noah had lost everything. había perdido todo He had lost his home, el everything. diluvio había acabado con todo the storm completely destroyed everything. pero cuando llegaron y y bajaron del arca But when they were finally able to come y el diluvio boat, había terminado when the storm ceased, dice la Biblia en Génesis 8.20 que Noé that Noah construyó un altar, built an altar to God. y sobre ese altar, and on that altar ofreció holocausto al Señor offered sacrifices to the y dice Lord. que cuando el Señor percibió el grato aroma de la ofrenda de Noé that came from Noah's offering, se dijo a sí mismo he said unto himself, aunque tuve intenciones though I had the intention de destruir al hombre of destroying man, no lo volví veré hacer Yet I will never destroy men again. y sabe por qué dijo eso Noé you know Dios perdón do you know why God said that? por la ofrenda que Noé Because estaba entregando miren el poder de una ofrenda cuando tú das una ofrenda offering, tú estás cumpliendo con un acto espiritual act, que está en la Biblia esto Bible. no es algo de hombre ni de un pastor. pastor por supuesto que todas las ofrendas of course, se invierten en la casa yes, del Señor así como ustedes pueden verlo sus pastores siempre tratan de mantener la casa de Dios bien, excelente y para eso se requiere finanzas y Noé entendió ese principio el principio de ofrendar por eso las recompensas del justo vinieron sobre él por eso vino sobre él el favor de Dios porque era fiel porque era honrado porque siempre daba sus ofrendas al Señor hoy quiero invitarte a dar una ofrenda una ofrenda que marque un nuevo comienzo en tu vida cuando Noé When Noah bajó del arca con su familia ark, evidentemente era un nuevo comienzo tenían que volver a hacer una casa tenían que volverse a establecer buscar una nueva tierra pero él entendió que esa ofrenda iba a liberar la tierra free the land iba a traer productividad and that it would bring e iba a marcar un nuevo comienzo hoy vas a dar una ofrenda so today I encourage que marque un nuevo comienzo give God an offering that will mark a new beginning en tu familia in your family, en tu casa in your household, en tus finanzas in your finances, en tu llamado in your calling. la ofrenda de hoy Today's offering se llamará will be called la ofrenda del nuevo comienzo the offering of a new beginning. así como lo fue para Just Noé 
y luego vemos que Noé dice la palabra prosperó aumentó es como si el diluvio no hubiera ocurrido pero una ofrenda marcó y determinó todo quiero que ahí donde estás tomes tu sobre si me pueden alcanzar un sobre que yo también voy a dar mi ofrenda tú vas a tomar tu sobre vas a escribir tu nombre y ahí en ese sobre vas a escribir con tu esfero la ofrenda del nuevo comienzo lo vas a hacer como un acto de fe la Biblia dice escribe la visión y declara a veces tenemos que escribir y eso tiene un poder espiritual y quiero que allí donde estás prepares esa ofrenda escribas ahí tu información y vas a decirle Señor yo quiero ese nuevo comienzo en mi vida así como lo tuvo Noé cuando dio esa ofrenda tal vez era el peor momento de su vida pero una ofrenda lo cambió todo quiero que levantes allí tu ofrenda donde estás quiero orar por ella ella, bendecirla declarar que las recompensas del justo visitarán tu vida visitarán tu casa visitarán tus hijos y esta ofrenda marcará un nuevo comienzo en medio de la adversidad en medio de la nada una sola ofrenda marcará lo que tú tú estás buscando gracias Señor por estas ofrendas por estos diezmos por estos pactos porque hoy Señor tú los visitas con milagros tú los visitas con aumento tú los visitas con recompensa y así como lo hiciste con Noé lo harás con ellos Señor en el nombre de Jesús Amén y amén. amén. ¿Cuántos dicen amén? Amén. Come on, can you amén. ¿Pueden amen? ofrendar? Go ahead. Amén. Amén. All right, so you continue giving. And I believe that as we give, as we give our finances, as we give our lives to the Lord, as we give our time to Him, the heavens open over our lives. Do you believe that? Amen. All right. Well, it's such a blessing. While you continue giving, I just want to say it's a, it really is an honor, a blessing, a privilege to be here with MCI Los Angeles today. It's beautiful to visit family all over the world and to see that the God that is moving in Colombia is the same God moving in the United States, moving in California, moving with power all over the nations. In recent weeks, we've been visiting many different places. We've been to Germany, and then the week after that, we visited uh, Marcela's brother in MCI Madrid in Spain. It was wonderful to see what God is doing there. Uh, Jose Luis, her He's the third of the siblings, so Marcela is the youngest, she's the fourth. Jose Luis is the third, my wife is the second, the prettiest one in the family, by the way. <laughs> well, she looks like Marcela, so I guess Marcela is also very pretty. And uh, it was wonderful to, to be there and to see that Jose Luis, who was the most difficult in the family, to see him serving the Lord, walking with God, being a friend of God. How many of you believe that if we become friends of God, God could transform absolutely everything in our lives? And so it was wonderful to see them in Madrid having lots of fruit. They say that Madrid is like the graveyard of all ministries. Well, I believe that that is a lie. All things are possible to those who believe. All things are possible to those that are friends of Jesus, that walk with Jesus, that have the heart of Jesus. And I'm seeing the same thing right here in MCA Los Angeles. Come on, let's give the Lord a mighty hand of praise for Pastor Luke, Marcella, their kids, 
Benjamin, Lucas, and the baby that's on the way. Today we're going to find out if it's a boy or a girl. I just want to know how many of you are for Team Girl? All right, and how many of you are for Team Boy? Okay, how many of you want to see a third boy in the family? All right, it's probably time for, for a girl. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I'm blessed to have a boy and a girl. So I have both teams in my house. I have Vanessa, she's upstairs. She's helping with the kids. She's 12. We also have Christopher, and he's six years old, and he thinks he's the boss at home. And I'm kind of starting to believe that he is the boss of our home. <laughs> has a lot of authority, has a great calling on his life, and I'm really blessed to be married to Margarita. She's a wonderful woman of God who's uh, helping me so much. She really straightened me out big time, and it was supernatural because it was the hand of Jesus on one hand and then the hand of Margarita on the other <laughs> end of it, and so I'm really, really blessed. But I want to introduce my message with a very special scripture that is found in Psalm chapter 16 and verse 11. I think it might show up on the screens. But listen to what it says. It says, you will show me the path of life. This is David speaking, and he's talking to God, and he says, you will show me the path of life. And then he said, in your presence is fullness of joy. Come on, can anyone smile in this place? He's saying, in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. This is amazing. This is a scripture. It's David talking about the things that God has done in his life. And he's saying, in your presence there is fullness of joy. There is pleasures. And it is forever and more. It's not just temporary. It's not for a moment. It's not when everything is going well. It's not only for when I'm being well paid for my job and I have a great salary. It's also when you're going through a difficult season, when you have been laid off, when you're going through a pandemic, when you're going through the fire, when you're going through the waters. There is fullness of joy in the presence of God. There is pleasure and it is forever and more. And if you believe it, give the Lord a mighty shout of praise. Amen. Please say, God has the best for me. Come on, say it if you believe it. God has the best for me. The name of my message is, God has the best for you. Can you turn to the person next to you and tell them, God has the best for you? That's right. Yeah, I'll let you take your time because I understand that there's Spanish, English, Brazilian... I think you all need to train and start learning Spanish because we're going to be speaking Spanish in heaven. Hallelujah. Now, maybe a little bit of Portuguese. It sounds kind of fun. But Americans are such wonderful people and sing beautifully, so maybe a little combo of the whole thing. Anyways, I want to share a little bit of my story as an introduction because I was a very religious member of a church for three years. I came to the Lord when I was very young, and I came not because I was seeking God, it's just that I ended up showing up at church on a Sunday because I had just returned to Colombia after living here in the United States for five years, and we basically failed at conquering the American dream. Now, please don't get me wrong. We were loaded with money because my father was involved in the wrong kind of business. It's a popular business that originated in Colombia, very well known for it's like a powder for people's noses. And uh, it's not makeup, people kind of sniff the powder. And it's not very good for your health. Basically, he made a ton of money, but yet we had lots of money, but we were very empty in our hearts. Because when you're not walking with God, when you're doing the wrong thing, when you're, doing what, when you're hurting other people, Maybe you make a lot of money as a result of it, but you feel very empty on the inside, and you also have lots of problems with the law, with the police. And so, basically, my family had to escape a terrible situation. Many of my family members ended up in prison as a result of the business that my father was involved in. And so, that was my father's side of the family. 
But meanwhile, my mother's side of the family in Colombia, while I was in the United States, they all came to Jesus. And when I came back, the best way to see everyone after not seeing anyone for five years was by attending church because everyone was there anyways. And so I showed up at church. That was December 2nd, 1990. And I remember I walked in. I had no idea what I was walking into. Basically, I had no interest in being there. I thought, I'm just going to come, and it's going to be a great way to see my family, whom I have not seen for years. Basically, I ended up staying for three years without really being a Christian, maybe calling myself a Christian, but not really living like a Christian. And the reason why I stayed was not really because of Jesus. It's just that we were in a very broken situation. My father had lost all his money. He had lost everything. And we were basically having to start all over again in Colombia. Now, you have to realize, Colombia was a mess back then. It was considered a failed state. And so, it was a difficult time. We came from living in beautiful neighborhoods to living in a difficult neighborhood. Anyways, I show up at church. I prayed the sinner's prayer like everyone prayed the sinner's prayer. And, and all my aunts and uncles, they're all touched. And my cousins, everyone's touched because Jorge Andres, that's my name, was there apparently receiving Jesus. And so at the end of the service, all my aunties are walking up to me and they're hugging me. And then they're touching my hand and then they're giving me money. And so I realized, wow, it's a blessing to come and be near Jesus. And so basically, I kept on attending because every Sunday, my aunties would give me money. And so I realized, I started learning the tricks. If, they were, if there was worship and I'd raise my hands and clap my hands, it seems like the fee would go up a little bit. And so it was, man, I was spinning after a couple of weeks. When there was worship, I was jumping, dancing. I even looked Hebrew during worship. And so... I was coming not because I thought I needed Jesus. I was coming because I needed something that the Jesus people could give me. You know, Jesus people are a blessing. But, you know, I was not really taking in on what the Jesus people at the church were taking in on. Maybe I was just there for a financial blessing to go drinking during the course of the week and not really living like a Christian. But after three years, I felt so empty. I felt so empty in my heart. I was faithful in attending every Sunday. I never missed a Sunday. But you know what? I was empty in my heart. I was not experiencing the best that God had, had for me. Or I was not experiencing what we just read in Psalm 16 and verse 11 because I had not acquainted myself with God from the bottom of my heart. He could not show me the path of life. Because I was not walking with God, I was not experiencing fullness of joy. You know, I could go clubbing and partying on Friday. I could get drunk and maybe laugh and apparently have a good time. But in the morning, I woke, woke up emptier than I was before going partying. And then the day after, I'd wake up emptier and emptier. Because you know something? Substances, friends, people, all the things that we do to fill the void in our heart could never fill the void of our heart. If you think that a friend fills the void in your heart, you need to be surrounded by friends. And when you're not with friends, you feel empty and you crash. But you know something? You don't need Happiness, you need fullness of joy. Your friends could give you temporary happiness. Alcohol could give you temporary happiness. Your career and your salary could give you temporary happiness, but it cannot give you joy. The only one that could give us joy is the Holy Spirit of God. Can you give him a mighty hand of praise? And so I was acquainted with experiencing temporary pleasure but the bible says something that is so true because i experienced it in my own life when i really gave my heart to jesus when i really surrendered my heart to him i really experienced pleasures forever and more can you give jesus a mighty hand of praise now 
I want to move on to the main scripture where I want to focus my message, and it is found in the book of Job, chapter 22, verses 21 through 28. If you have your Bible with you, you could open it there. Anyways, you're going to see it on the screen, but I want you to see with your own eyes the kinds of things that God has in store for you. So listen to the reading of the scripture. It says, come back now into friendship with him and be at peace. Thereby, good will come to you. Receive, please, instruction from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. You will remove affliction far from your tents. Then you will have more gold than dust and the gold of a fir among the stones of the brooks. Yes, the Almighty will be your defense. For then you will have your delight in the Almighty and lift up your face to God. You will make your prayer to him, and he will hear you, and you will pay your vows. What you decide on will be done, and light will shine on your ways. Can anyone here say amen? amen. You see, according to this scripture, if you come back into friendship with God, if you walk in friendship with him, amazing things will happen to you. First of all, it says that if you are a friend of God, you will receive peace. You could see it in the scripture. Verse 21 says, come back now into friendship with him and be at peace. Look, when you are walking in the opposite direction of God, you find all the opposite of peace. You find affliction. You find conflict. You are constantly at war. But you know, when you come back to God, or when you decide to turn to God, you will experience peace. God doesn't want you to be at war or at conflict with, with yourself. Today, we are seeing a generation that is at war or at conflict with themselves. They're confused about themselves. They're following what social media is saying. They're following an ideology that is not based on the word of God. Let me tell you, everything in this world has an instruction manual. You could buy yourself a laptop and ignore the instruction manual and you will ruin the laptop. But if you buy the laptop and you pay attention to the instruction manual, it's always going to work well. And it's the same with a car. It's the same with a microwave. It's the same with a cell phone. It's the same with everything. Well, I want to tell you something. There is a manual for your life. It's the Word of God. And it doesn't matter if they're trying to tell us in the education system of the United States that there's a new ideology. Let me tell you, that ideology that tries to confuse young people men into thinking that they are women or, they, or vice versa. That is not from the word of God. And you will always be at war and at conflict with yourself when you believe all those other ideologies. God was never confused about what he made of you. And I'm going to tell some of you, you are not a monkey. You are not a lizard. You might want to identify yourself as whatever, but let me tell you something. You are a man or a woman, and if you're confused about it, you could go to the restroom and look at yourself in the mirror, and there's only two choices, male or female, and that's it. God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Come on, give Jesus a mighty hand of praise. Now, when we encounter God, that conflict within ourselves, God helps us with that conflict within ourselves. Because God knows how our life could operate the right way. But you know, before encountering God, I had only encountered religion for three years. I already shared the story with you. And religion didn't help me very much. God doesn't want a religion for you. He wants a relationship with you. When you walk in a relationship with Jesus, that's what changes everything. While I walked in a religion, religion was not bringing peace into my heart. Religion was keeping me walking in conflict all the time. But when I found God, when I really found him, I found peace within myself. I stopped being confused in my life. You know, I suffered lots of abuse as a child as well. The enemy could have deceived me in many ways, but praise God, I never believed him. But many questions were fired up in my mind. But you know, the word of God brought clarity, and there is no confusion. If you walk with Christ, there will be no confusion in your life. Do you believe that? 
Now verse 21 says that if you become a friend of God, good will come to you. Come on, can you smile and say good will come to me? Yes, good news will come to you. So shut CNN off and, and turn on the word of God that is saying good news will come to you. Some people are worried about the monkeypox. Well, let me tell you something. If you're still alive after COVID-19, don't you worry about monkeypox. The people that need to be worried about monkeypox, maybe if they change their lifestyle a little bit and walk in accordance to the word of God, they're not going to need to worry about no monkeypox. Come on, it's getting quiet as a church in here. Come on, is this... Come on, are you listening to the word of God? You will not be afraid of bad news. You will not be afraid of what the World Health Organization says. God's favor will be upon your life. You will come out of curse and you will step into blessing. If you walk with God, if you become a friend of God, your life will be restored. You could see it with your own eyes in verse 23. It says, if you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. Restoration. You know, God is an expert at bringing restoration. To restore something is to bring it back to its original design. And maybe your design has been messed up because of all the things that you've been listening to. Because of all the things that you did wrong in your life. Because of all the mistakes, mistakes that you made. Because of mistakes that you made under the influence of a substance or a bad friend. But let me tell you something. I remember back in 1992. It was November 20th, 1990. Uh, I'm sorry, April 90, 1992. It was the first time I ever visited England. I have since visited England many times, once or twice every year because we minister there a lot. But on my first trip to England, we stayed for a month. And we did all the tourist things that you could do in England. And one of them is that we visited Windsor Castle. Now, that is the castle where Queen Elizabeth II lives. It's a beautiful castle. It's amazing. And so it was open for tours. And so we decided to take the tour of the castle. The queen was not in the house. And when she was not in the house, you could, they would open it up and allow people to have a tour of the castle. And so it was amazing to see beautiful spaces, lots of art, beautiful furniture, just Beautiful wherever you'd look. And then, you know, it was great. It was a wonderful experience. I'm sure the queen wanted to have coffee with me, but she didn't know I was in town. She didn't know I was visiting. She missed out. Anyways, a few months later, I'm back in Colombia, and I'm watching the news. It was Friday, November 20th, 1992, and there was a huge fire in a castle, and then it said, Windsor Castle on fire. In my mind, I thought, oh, how sad. That was such a beautiful castle. Anyways, a few years passed, and I, I had gone back every year, but there was a particular year where I went with my wife, and we stayed in a hotel across the street from it, and she wanted to go and see the castle. And I said, nah, it's not worth it. There was a fire. I'm sure it's a mess inside. And someone overheard me saying that to her and said, oh, no, actually, you should take her. It's amazing. They did an amazing work of restoration in it. So we went and visited. Turns out that they hired some of the world's greatest curators to work on the restoration of the castle. And as I walked in and did the tour with my wife, I was so shocked and impressed. Everything looked exactly the same as I had seen before or even better. And you know, it made me think about the work of God who is the greatest curator in history. He is an expert at restoring masterpieces. And I'm going to tell you something. Every one of you are masterpieces in the hands of God. But some of you feel the opposite of a masterpiece because of all the chaos that the enemy has brought into your life because you've been running away from God, because you've been living your life the opposite of what God would like for your life. You've been running around with the wrong friends. You've been uh, emotionally involved with the wrong people, you've mishandled your life, your finances, your time, God is bringing you into his house 
MCI Los Angeles so that you could become friends of people that are wanting to live their lives for Jesus, who are friends of God. And you know something? When you hang around with athletes, you become an athlete. When you hang around with fools, you become a fool. When you walk around with friends of God, you also become a friend of God. If you want to become a friend of God, give Jesus a mighty hand of praise. Now, the Bible also says that if you become a friend of God, affliction will come to an end in your life. That is found in verse 23. It says, he will remove affliction far from your tents. Affliction far from your house. Affliction far from wherever you are. It will be far away from your workplace. It will be far away from your church. It will be far away from your family. Now, think of affliction. What could bring affliction to a person's life? The affliction of sickness will leave you. Infirmity causes people to feel afflicted. Well, he is an expert at healing diseases. Even if they are terminal diseases, he could heal you of any disease that is in your body. He could cleanse you. He could give you a new heart. He could give you a new body part. Maybe the doctors have let you down and said there's nothing they can do for you. But let me tell you, when doctors can't do anything, the doctor of doctors, Jesus Christ, who gave his life on the cross for us, he could give you whatever part you need in your body, and he could restore your life. He will remove the affliction of death from your life. You see, a lot of people in modern culture, they don't realize that they are slaves. They are slaves of debt. They are slaves of work. They have no time for their wife. They have no time for their children because they're working one job, two jobs, three jobs. They're working all the time. Let me tell you, this is not about the amount of money that you make in your salary. This is about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, removing the curse of affliction from your life. When he removes the curse of affliction, you don't need to be a slave. Jesus came to set the captives free, and he wants to set you free so that you could have a job, one job, and be well paid. And even if you're not well paid, he will give you a spiritual intelligence to make the right investments so that you could have a great return financially. Come on, can anyone say amen? Is anyone receiving the word of God? He can remove the affliction of alcoholism. Could you believe that at age 12, I was an alcoholic because I fell into the affliction of alcoholism because my father was never around, because he was always sending me to live with relatives, and I felt so empty in my heart that eventually I found alcohol. And you know, I tried to leave it many times. I tried to follow the steps of What's it called? AAA or what? Alcoholics Anonymous. I tried all those things. I tried them many times, but I could not. A three-day encounter, God completely set me free, and I've been set free ever since then. Whatever it is in your life, drug addiction, addiction to pornography, any kind of addiction, the only addiction that you should have is the one I have. I'm addicted to Jesus, the greatest substance this universe has ever known. Come on, give Jesus a mighty hand of praise. If you become a friend of God, you will find financial prosperity. And I love the, the words of the scripture. It says in verse 24, you will have more gold than dust. Think about it for a moment. To have more gold than dust. If you go to the places, to the gold mines, back in the day, I, I don't know how it is today, but I remember seeing documentaries of people digging out a bunch of dirt and uh, they put them in what, like shakers or fil shifters? Shifters. And they're like shifting, I guess. And a lot of dirt is coming out. And so there's a lot of dirt, tons of dirt, to just receive little sparkles of dust. But what is God saying? If you walk with me, if you allow me to speak wisdom into your ear, if you listen to my instruction, if you do what is right in my sight, 
I'm going to lead you to the right deals. I'm going to lead you to the right clients. If you're in real estate, he's going to lead you to the right buyers. If you're in retail, he's going to connect you with the right people. You don't need to lie to anyone. You don't need to scam anyone. You don't need to do any of those things. You don't need to cheat in order to prosper or to get ahead. You could get ahead in life if you do what is right. If you follow Jesus, the Son of God, you will have more gold than dust. Meaning that you only wipe a little bit of dust and you find lots of gold. Yes, even in the most humble job, God could bless you if you're honest, if you're faithful, if you are persistent, if you, if you have excellence in your heart. You know, a lot of Christians, they're not good workers because they feel like they are underpaid. Well, let me tell you something. How about if, you, if your job, your schedule is from 8 to 5, how about if you show up at eight on the dot or even earlier? How about if you are excellent at your job? How about if you are trustworthy and you will be promoted? But when you're cheating, showing up late, being lazy, showing up dressed like a bomb, don't show up dressed like a bomb. There's people that get offended because the police pulls them over and they're looking terrible. And you know, they're some people, whether white or black or yellow or whatever, the, their behavior, their demeanor, while they're attracting disrespect, you want to be respected by others, treat yourself with a little respect. Come on, can anyone say amen? You know why? Because when you are a friend of Jesus, you become an ambassador of Jesus. That means that Jesus is cool. You know, when they, when they uh, came for Jesus... They took his robe, and they actually cast lots to see who would end up taking his robe. That means that Jesus, he knew how to dress. He was cool. Have you ever seen someone not cool being followed by multitudes? Well, I'm telling you, Jesus was the definition of cool. Wherever he showed up, when he was at a house, the house was packed. Well, let me tell you something. You're going to dress cool, you're going to look cool, you're going to talk cool, because if you're a friend of Jesus, you become cool. Come on, get excited with the Word of God. If you're religious, that's another story. You know, religious is synonymous of fastidious, annoying, boring, stupid, rude, nasty. But this is what the culture today is telling us, that if you're nasty, if you're rude, if you dress like a chump, if you're mean to people, then you're cool. You're not cool, you're stupid, you're going to end up in prison. But when you're really cool, that means you go about your business doing what's good for others, doing what Jesus would do. Helping people to save their marriage. Helping people in their job. Helping people to live a better life. If you're a friend of Jesus, give Jesus a mighty hand of praise. Come on. Give Jesus a mighty hand of praise. He will give you more gold than dust. But you know, when people are surrounded by, by scarcity, they end up doing crazy things. They end up committing crime. They end up cheating in whatever it is that they do, cheating at work, lying to their boss. You don't need to do that. You just need to do what is right. You just need to set the right example wherever it is that you work in, whatever it is that you do. If you become a friend of God, he will become your advocate. In other words, he will become your lawyer. He will become your defense. That's what verse 25 says. The Almighty will be your defense. I don't know if any of you have ever had legal problems. Raise your hand if you've had legal problems before. Yeah, a few of you have had legal problems before. And I don't know if it's happened to some of you. When you have legal problems, you go and hire yourself an attorney, a lawyer, someone to help you. And they're usually very expensive. You end up giving them all your money, and at the end of the case... You lost all your money because they got you into more trouble and then you are declared guilty and you are charged as guilty.
Have you ever seen that happen or has it ever happened to you? But you know something? Jesus, the Almighty, he wants to be your defense. I remember a situation, a young man in his uh, 20, uh, late 20s, 27, his name Gonzalo from our church, when he did know Jesus, he was a policeman and he was patrolling the streets and basically pulled someone over who had lots of drugs in their car. And he was with five other friends. And so they decided to do something terrible and they kept the drugs for themselves and sell them. Basically, they became millionaires overnight because of that. And it was all fine. It was all great because they all decided to keep it amongst themselves. But one day, one of the five guys decided to repent of what he had done and basically told the whole truth. And so this young man I'm telling you about, Gonzalo, he was caught, ended up sentenced to 38 years in prison. And while he was in prison, the prisons were so... Um, The population was so high that he had good behavior and he started having an experience with God that they decided to let him off one Sunday of every week. Turns out that he went to church. I had spoken that Sunday on this scripture and he came up to me after the service and we had a conversation. Now, I felt in my heart, you know, you should write a letter to the station that you worked for Because I asked him if he had ever confessed what he had done. And he said, no, no, I always pleaded innocent. And I said, but you're not. And he said, yes, I know. And I said, well, and where did that get you, pleading innocent? He said, well, 38 years in prison. I said, well, wouldn't it be better for your soul to go and, you know, apologize to your captain of the station or, you know, the people in authority? And he said, you know, it sounds like a good idea. Came back the next month. Did you do it? He said, no. And then the next month, I asked him. He said, yes, I did it. And he said, Pastor, I actually did it. It turns out that I'm not here just for today. He said, I'm here because I'm free. Because it turns out that the captain of the police station sent the letter to the judge. The judge needed to make a decision to let some prisoners uh, go because it was overpopulated. And he received the letter from the police captain for the station that I worked for. And he said, even though you've been charged for 38 years, you're free to go. Your sentence is completely cleared. Let me tell you something. The Almighty will be your defense in the situation that you're going through. Maybe your home is broken and your wife doesn't believe a word you say. You have the Almighty as your defense. Maybe your parents don't believe you, people don't believe you, but if Jesus believes you, if you are able to come before Him, broken before Him, asking Him to forgive you, asking Him, asking him to change you, He will change you. He will help you. He will become your advocate, and he will set you free and deliver you from your affliction. Can you give Jesus a mighty hand of praise? Now, I am concluding, and perhaps if we can have the wonderful worship team come and help me as I come to the conclusion of this message, I want to say something to you. If you're a friend of Jesus, your prayers will be heard. I don't know if it's ever happened to you that you've prayed prayers and you felt like you've had no answer, but the word of God is saying you will make your prayer to him and he will hear you. He will. You know, he listens to his friends. If you're not his friend, he's not obliged to listen. But because you and I are making a decision today to become friends of God, he is promising us He's giving us his word. If you come back into friendship with me, if you pray to me, your prayers will be heard. So how about if you stand to your feet right where you are? How about if you lift your hands up to heaven in the presence of God? Thinking about the scripture that I said in the beginning of my message, where I mentioned Psalm 16. It says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. How about if you smile and lift your hands up toward heaven? You know, 
God is about to open prison doors. Yes, you might not be in prison right now, but in a certain way, you've walked about life feeling as if you were in prison. And today, the Almighty God who promises to be your defense, He's here to help you, to open the floodgates of heaven in your favor, to set you free and to break chains in your life. All you have to do is turn to Jesus. All you have to do is pray a little prayer to Him, to just lift up your voice and call out on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. So with your own voice, with your own words, how about if you start calling on the name of Jesus and telling Him, Lord Jesus, I want to be your friend. I need you in my life. I need you to help me. I need you to help me in my walk. Maybe some of you here, you've been in church for a while. Some of you have been in church all your life, but you've experienced what religion can give you. It gives you a nice little fix here and there. It makes you feel good from time to time. It clears your conscience from time to time, but it doesn't give you real joy. It doesn't give you fullness of joy. It doesn't give you pleasures forever. It's just temporary. Alcohol gives you temporary pleasure. The wrong kind of relationship could give you temporary pleasure, but a lifetime of pain and sorrow. How about if you turn to Jesus? How about if you look at His face right now? How about if you close your eyes and look at Jesus? He's here in His place. And if anyone calls out on the name of the Lord, will be saved. Lift your hands up. The light of God will shine on your ways. That's what the Word of God says. He's saying, if you become my friend, my light will shine on your ways. Listen, if you're not His friend, His light doesn't have to shine on your ways. But when you're His friend and your ways are pleasant to Him, His light will shine on your ways. You will shine at your workplace. You will shine at your study place, at your school. You will shine at whatever it is that you do. If you're in sports, you will shine. You will shine in your family. Yes, God has made me shine compared to my brothers, my brother and sister. And then they also follow Jesus. And now the light of Jesus is shining on their ways. Forget about the person next to you. God is talking to you. Some people want to distract you. Don't let him distract you. God is speaking to you. He's speaking to you. He's speaking to you. So let him speak to you and minister to you and change you and set you free and break the chains in your life and let his sh light shine in your ways. I'd like to ask you to invite Jesus into your life by welcome, welcoming him and allowing him to sit in the throne of your heart. Don't let anyone distract you. This is a moment for you and it's between you and God, not between you and the person next to you. So don't be distracted by anything or by anyone. This is a moment that could change everything in your life. You didn't come here for religion. You came to encounter Jesus, the Son of the living God. And if the Son of the living God lives in your heart, the beautiful things that I just mentioned that come from His Word will be His promise to you. His light will shine in your ways. So repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I repent of my sins. Lord, I ask you to please forgive all my sins. I believe in you. I believe that you died on the cross for me. And today, I want to receive you in my heart. I declare that you are the Lord and Savior of my life. And I pray that you please write my name in the book of life and don't ever erase it. Lord, I ask that you do this in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Come on now, start worshiping God. Yes, praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. And now lift your hands in the presence of God and worship the Lord. Come into 
speaking to some people saying come back now into friendship you see we could walk the life of religion we could see a world that is hurting people getting lost culture changing going in the wrong direction and lots of people who know God who know of the things of God who are close to the things of God who have knowledge of God but are so far away from God, God is saying, come back now. This is the time. This is the day. This is the hour of your calling. It's not tomorrow. You don't know if you have tomorrow. This is the moment that God has given you. He's giving it to you right now. And if you want to respond to the call, whether you are new for the first time, whether you've been away from God, whether you've been living the religious life, I want to call you, invite you to come to this altar and surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Forget about anyone around you. This is you and God. He wants to change you. And it starts now by coming back now into friendship with Him. The scripture that I spoke to you from, it starts with come back now into friendship with Him. And then all the benefits I mentioned. You don't receive the benefits if you don't come back now into friendship with Him. It's based on the three things. Coming back from wherever it is that you've gone. Turning your back on your ways and turning your face to His way. It needs to happen now. You don't know if you have another chance. This is the hour. This is the day. Call on Him while He's still listening to you. And the doors are open to you. He's calling you. He's knocking at the door of your heart. If anyone hears my voice, He says, I will come into Him and dine with Him and He with me. This is for those who are brand new in the church, but this is also for those who have fallen into the trap of living a religious life. And He's calling you now to friendship. What are your best friends like? You can feel like you could say anything around them. Well, listen to me. Some people have created a train of thought that with God, we need to be very serious. And it's like he's majestic. And although he is, he describes himself as a friend. So as a friend, as you would come to a friend, come to him now. He's here to listen to you, not to reject you not to turn his back on you, not to judge you, criticize you. He's not here to hurt you. He's not here to force you, to change you. It's something that if you open your heart, 
He will help you. He gives you the courage. He gives you the desire to change. Maybe you've never really wanted to change. You've been happy the way you've been living, but you realize that something is missing. If you come back now, God will make a change. So as we worship God, you give your heart to Jesus. Miracles have when you move. Healing is come in this room. Miracles have when you move. Heaven is come. Oh, we believe that miracles happen when you move. Healing is come in this room. Miracles happen when you move. Heaven is come. Lord, we believe today that miracles happen when so much father for what you're doing in this place thank you for this word that we received today lord i just pray that it would transform us that we would leave this place changed so we guard what you gave us today and i bless your church every single person here every family represented lord that your hand be upon them that your face shine upon them and your favor go with them lord we thank you so much for what you're doing in this house. We pray, God, that you would increase your presence and what you're doing. We bless you and we love you. In Jesus' name, come on, let's bless the Lord together. I have one final announcement as you go. This Thursday night... Um, instead of connect groups, what we're going to be doing is actually a night to come back to God. Um, we, have, uh, we have more family from Bogota, Colombia. Pastor Lucho, or Luis, excuse me, and Jeanette, uh, they're going to be ministering. It's going to be here in the house come 7.30 Thursday. We'd love to have you. It's going to be amazing. God bless you. Have an amazing day.